Okay, so we're going to look at Further Stats 1, Chapter 7, which is Probability Generating Functions, and I might refer to them as PGFs throughout this. So what actually is a Probability Generating Function? Well, a Probability Generating Function is a function that stores the details of a probability distribution, but in a different format. And the way it does it is it stores it as the coefficients of a polynomial, as a polynomial. The function has got some very interesting and some useful properties that we will discover over the course of this chapter. We're going to look at six different properties. And this is actually probably my one of my favourite chapters of Further Stats. It might be my favourite chapter, um, simply because it just feels the most unique and it feels really different to the rest of Further Stats 1. Um, you're going to be using like lots of algebraic techniques and differentiation. Um, it still will have things about the other kind of distributions like geometric and negative binomial, but it's really easy to identify one of these questions and it definitely feels like the most different. So I quite like it just because it feels quite fresh and different to some of the other bits we've looked at. Now, because there's differentiation, it is essential that you have studied the year two differentiation content from A-level maths before learning this chapter. And I would also recommend having looked at Core Pure 2, uh, Chapter 2, which is on series, but in particular, you would like to have a look at the Maclaurin series. Now, it's not absolutely essential that you've looked at Maclaurin series because it only comes up like a tiny, tiny bit in this chapter. Um, but it's probably better to leave this one in further stats until you've kind of done enough from Core Pure and you've come across Maclaurin series because it will just help you access a couple of the smaller parts from some exam questions as well. So I'm actually just going to show you what a probability generating function is. So we've got this distribution here. We've got the outcome 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we've got the probabilities of those outcomes along the bottom here. And these are obviously all of the outcomes because it all adds up to 1. So the probability probability generating function. So I'm saying the function which is going to generate the distribution x. So the generating function of x in terms of t. And t is just a dummy variable, meaning it's got no real meaning, is equal to this thing that we've got here and actually I just wonder if you can think about what the connections are well it's pretty clear that you can see that the powers of t that we've got here they are referring to the outcomes and then the coefficients of t to the power of x are the probabilities of those outcomes so you can look at this one here that 0.35 t squared is going to tell us that for the outcome 2 the probability is 0.35 and for this one here, with the outcome of 1, because the power is 1, the probability is 0 0.3. And normally we wouldn't write t to the power of 0, we would just write 0 0.2. But we know that that is referring to t to the power of 0, so the outcome of 0 is 0 0.2. And that is a probability generating function. And you can see it's a polynomial. As we go further through this chapter, we will see that some of these things are not necessarily polynomials, but they might be something that can be written as a polynomial, which is why this Maclaurin series kind of comes back in because uh, we know that Maclaurin series allow us to write any function as polynomials. So watch out for things that we always want them to be like this, but they might not look like that at the very beginning. So we've got some examples of some probability generating functions here. I'm going to probably have a go at just doing one and then you could try the other one and then I'll do one and then you can try the other one. Okay. So this first one, it just wants us to write the probability generating functions for the following distributions. So I'm going to start off by saying that it is a function generating the discrete random variable x, and it's always going to be in terms of t, that dummy variable. Now it's going to be 0.25 times t to the power of 0, which I can just leave. The next probability is 0.5, and that's going to be t squared, because the outcome is t is 2. And then our last one is going to be 0.25 t to the power of 4, because the outcome is 4. So why don't you have a quick go at writing down this next one? Okay, so it is g. This time it's going to generate the discrete random variable y. So I'm going to say that it is y. And I'm going to put in brackets t still. Now the outcome is just 1, so it's going to be a third t to the power of 1 plus a third t cubed plus a ninth t to the power of 4 plus 2 ninths t to the power of 6. So you can see it doesn't have to include all of the outcomes, it could just has to have all the ones that have a probability with them. And now I want to tabulate the distributions for the following probability generating functions. So I'll tabulate this one, and then you can tabulate this one that we've got here. 
So we're going to have x is our outcome and the probability that our random variable is equal to that outcome. And we'll think about the different options that are available. Well, that 0 0.1, that probability, goes with t to the power of 0. The 0 0.3 is going to t squared and the 0 0.6 is going to t cubed. So it's just going to have the outcomes 0, 2 and 3. And then for this one, because it's um, for y, we're going to have a lowercase y and the probability that y is equal to y. And we're going to see what our outcomes are here. So the 10th probability, that is going to go with t to the power of 1. The fifth probability is going to go with t squared, so it's outcome of 2. And the 7 tenths probability is going with t to the power of 4, so the outcomes are 1, 2 and 4 here. And I've said that at the bottom, we're going to note PGFs are polynomials, and so they only take on non-negative integer powers. So all of the outcomes always have to be zero or greater and integers. So what I've said, negative outcomes are not possible. OK, so that's what probability generating functions are. And we're actually going to go, I'm going to take, we'll pause the video at this point, and then we're going to start going through the different properties as we go.